Hi guys, Assalamualaikum. So, I'm Hazri and I'm going to explain to you about the vertebrate evolution topic together with my partner, Kastina. So, for this chapter outline here, yeah, 29.1, the core dates, I'm going to explain about this letter. And after me, um, the vertebrates, 29.2, I'll be explained by Kastina. Okay, so if you want to look um, this in your media textbooks, turn to page 543, okay? So, here is the learning outcome, okay? Um, at the end of the video, you must be able to identify the four basic characteristics of the chordates, and then you must be able to name two groups of non-vertebrate chordates, and last one, you must be able to describe two features of each of the two groups of non-vertebrate chordates. So these are the learning learning outcomes that you must be able to know after watching this video. So before we go through all of the learning outcome, you need to know what is chordate first. Okay, so chordate is most complex group of animal on earth. Okay, most chordates have an internal skeleton made of bone and or cartilage to which the muscle are attached. Okay, so chordate is phylum chordata. It's a kingdom. Okay, so all of these are chordates, and we human are also chordates. Okay, understand that. Okay, here is the four basic characteristics of a chordate. The first one is not a cord. The second one is dorsal tubular nerve cord. The third one is pharyngeal pouch. Here. And then the last one is post anal tail. Here is not a cord, dorsal tubular, pharyngeal pouch, and also post anal tail. So these are four basic characteristics of a chordates. Okay, so I'm going to explain to you one by one now. Okay, so now, um, not a cord, it's a torsal supporting road and it's located below the nerve cord, and it is also a structure made of cartilage. Okay, that is not a cord. Okay, so the next one is dorsal tubular nerve cord. For dorsal tubular nerve cord, it have a tubular cord situated dorsally. Okay, the interior portion becomes the brain in most chordates, and in vertebrates, the nerve cord, often called the spinal cord, is protected by vertebrae. Okay, so that is the dorsal tubular nerve cord. The next one is pharyngeal pouch. Okay, pharyngeal pouch are only can be seen during the embryonic development in the non-vertebrate chordates. It becomes respiratory organs, but in terrestrial vertebrates, it modified for various purposes such as auditory tubes in humans. So the pharyngeal pouch are going to modify itself and become such as auditory tubes in human okay and then the last one is post anal tail it's a tail in embryo if not in the adult it extends beyond the anus and the tail will disappear during embryonic development so that is these are four basic characteristics of uh, chordates that you should be able to identify it. okay so now I'm going to explain about the non-vertebrate chordates. Okay, um, so the non-vertebrate chordates are divided into two. The first one is cephalochordates and the second one is urochordates. Okay, so for the cephalochordates, the example here is lancelet. And then for the urochordates, the example is sea skirt. So I'm going to explain this okay, one by one. What is uh, lancelets and sea skirts? For the lancelets, okay, it's a type of cephalochordates. It's a marine chordate, a few centimeters long, found in shallow water, feed on microscopic particles, and lancelet adults possess all four general chordate characteristics. So as you can see here, that um, an adult lancelet possess all of the basic characteristics that I had mentioned just now. The pharyngeal pouches, okay, the notochord, the post anal tail, and the dorsal hello nerve cord. Okay, so this is the lancelets. 
maybe this is your first time looking at this kind at this kind of animal <laughs> okay so this one is sea skirt sea skirt clavelina it's a type of eurocord it's also known as um tunicate okay so it's live on the ocean floor under the sea also called tunicates and bilaterally symmetrical you have all four chordate characteristics okay, so this is the actual um actual diagram of the sea skirt this is the animation okay and then here i also attach um a phylogenetic tree okay as you can see here all of these are chordates but the lancelet and tunicates are located placed at the bottom of the tree okay this means that um tunicates and lancelet has no vertebrae have no jaws have no body skeletons lungs limbs amniotic egg and so and also the memory gland so it means that tunicates and lancelets only possess all of the four basic characteristics that I had mentioned just now. So all of these are chordates. These jawless fishes are also chordates. Okay. Um, these shark, fish, frog, okay, reptiles are also chordates. So um, for the vertebrates, I'm going to pass to Castina. And I think that's all for me. Thank you. Alright, now we will continue uh, with the next subtopic, 29.2, the vertebrates. So this is the learning outcome. So by the end of this lecture, I wish that you can, you will be able to describe the four characteristics that are unique to vertebrates. You can explain how the terms tetrapod, pnatostome, and amniotes relate to vertebrate evolution. And you can identify the geologic era and periods in which chordates and the first vertebrates appear. So, what is vertebrate? Animals with a backbone are called vertebrates. Vertebrates are chordates with vertebral columns and certain other features that distinguish them from the non-vertebrate chordates. So, we will learn about uh, these features after this. So, if we look at these pictures, this is the vertebrates. Vertebrates uh, consist of fishes, reptiles, birds, mammals, amphibians. These are all vertebrates. Humans and groundhog is under mammals. We will continue with the characteristic of vertebrates. As embryos, vertebrates have four chordate characteristics. Vertebrates have these features. The first one is vertebral column, second one is skull, the third one is endoskeleton, and the fourth one is internal organization. So we will look into this form. The first one is vertebral column. The embryonic notochord is generally replaced by a vertebral column composed of individual vertebrae. Remnants of the notochord give rise to invertebral discs, this one, which are compressible, cartilaginous pads between the vertebrae. The vertebral column is a part of the flexible but strong endoskeleton. Here, this, uh, this gives evidence that the vertebrates are segmented. Now let's, see about, now, let's see the replacement of notochord by the vertebrae. Here is the notochord and there is endocterm and neural tube. Uh, in the second diagram, we can see that the vertebral body develops around the notochord and there is blood vessels. A vertebral arch develops around the neural tubes and then they become ribs, arch and body. So the vertebrate replace the notochord and surround the neural tube. Um, this is only one part of the vertebral column. A vertebral column consists of 23 vertebrae. The next characteristic of vertebrate is skull. It encloses and protects the brain. During vertebrate evolution, the brain has increased in complexity. Specialized regions have developed to carry out specific functions. 
high degree of capillization is compared by complex sense of organs. Uh, for an example, eyes. Eyes develop as an outgrowth of the brains. Then for the ears, uh, in aquatic vertebrates, it functions as primarily equilibrium devices. In land vertebrates, it functions as sound wave receivers. And there are many vertebrate sponsors well developed sense of smell and taste. So, uh, the third characteristic for vertebrate is endoskeleton. Vertebrate skeleton, either a bone or a cartilage, is a living tissue that grows with the animals. The function of endoskeletons is to protect internal organs, serve as a place of attachment for muscles. Like if we can see here, in human, um, endoskeleton protects internal organs such as lungs or hearts. And then, uh, it serves as a place of attachment for muscles. The skeleton and muscles form a system that permits rapid and efficient movement. Uh, such as in fish, uh, fish have pectoral and pelvic fins that help it, uh, helps to move for movements. And in terrestrial tetrapods, uh, such as frog, it have four limbs uh, for movement. Alright, next, the last characteristic for the vertebrate is internal organization. Vertebrates have a large column, um, lungs and hearts are parts of column, and a complete digestive tract. Blood in vertebrate, uh, they contains blood vessels, thus it is a closed circulatory system. The respiratory system consists of gills or lungs. Uh, they obtain oxygen from the environment uh, and for lung, it is for cellular respiration. And then for the kidneys, uh, this is in the digestive tract. The kidneys is important excretory and water regulating organs. It get rid or conserve the body of water as necessary. And then in the internal organization, the sexes are generally separate and the reproduction is usually sexual. Okay, now we proceed with the vertebrate evolution. Chordates appear suddenly at the start of the Cambrian period 542 million years ago. The relatively rapid appearance of most major neophyla as demonstrated in the fossil record. So we can trace their evolutionary history from this phylogenic tree of the chordates. So here, there are chordates, vertebrates, pinatostome, tetrapods, and amniotes. And this is all the traits. And then we will start from the bottom. Lancet and tunicate is in the outgroup, while the jawless fishes, cartilaginous fishes, ray fin fishes, lobe fin fishes, amphibians, reptiles, includes birds, and mammals is in the in-group. Alright, let's start with the first trait, notochord. So lens, uh, lancet and tunicates only have notochords. And then, the next, the next trait is vertebrate. Vertebrae. Tunicus and lancelet does not have vertebrae, but the others have. And then the next trait is jaws. So, jawless fish does not have jaws, but cartilaginous fishes and the others have jaws. The next trait is bony skeleton. So, cartilaginous fishes does not have bony skeleton because their bone is made up of cartilage. And then, next is the next trait is lungs. So, ray fin fishes does not have lungs, but if we can see here, lobe fin fishes have both lungs and gills. The next is four limbs. The amphibians is the first vertebrates to have limbs. And then, for the amniotic egg, uh, reptiles, includes birds, and mammals have amniotic eggs. And lastly, the trait is memory gland, so the mammals uh, have memory glands. So, here we can see they have been divided into these Codrates, vertebrates, granulostome, tetrapods, and amniotes. What is gnatostome? Gnatostome is animals with jaws, uh, such as fish. If we can see here, bony fish, it has a really sharp jaws. And then, the next one is tetrapods. In Greek, tetra means force and podos means food. So, uh, this means tetrapods. 
What is a terrestrial vertebrate which have four limbs? For example, here is lizard. And snakes, uh, snakes, their evolutionary ancestor does have four limbs. And then lastly is amniot. Animals, amniot is animals that exhibit an amniotic membrane and develop within an aquatic environment. Uh, here I can give an example which is archaeotyris. Here uh, we can see the vertebrates, gnatostome, tetrapods and amniotes. So the first vertebrates live on land had evolved from these fishes by the Devonian period. Alright, that's all from both of us. Uh, we hope that uh, all of you can understand and can answer all of the learning outcome. Thank you.